Welcome everyone to another lesson here on English Like a Native with me, Anna English. I hope you are all well and looking forward to this lesson that is all about British slang words beginning with the letter K. Yay! How exciting! So um, I picked out about 16 or 17 words for you that are very commonly used in spoken British English but rarely seen written down. So hello if you are here, do feel free to leave a comment and tell me where in the world you are watching from but while we're here ready to go let's use that energy and get straight on in there. So I have made my notes and just so that you know, anyone who feels like contributing a super chat to this channel will receive the notes as a thank you. So the very first word is a word that I absolutely love and it's the word kerfuffle. What a great word. Kerfuffle. Kerfuffle. What a kerfuffle. A kerfuffle means a commotion. For example, if I'm walking down the street and I hear someone shouting and I hear lots of people acting unusual, there's something crazy going on, then there's some sort of kerfuffle. I would also say that every time I try to find anything in my handbag, there is a kerfuffle. I'm always like, ah, I can't find it. I've lost my phone. I've lost my keys. Ah, and then it's there. It's just that my handbag is so deep. I can never find anything. Typical, typical of me have a handbag full of nonsense rubbish and I can't find the things that are important. So there's always a kerfuffle when I try to find something in my handbag. So the example sentence I've given for the word kerfuffle is, there was a mix up at the airport and someone else took my bags. What a kerfuffle. What a kerfuffle. So there you go, nice and easy. Hello, lots of you jumping in here. Hi, it's lovely to see you. I hope that you are all well watching from all over the world, like Denmark, Morocco, Bulgaria, Ukraine, France, fabulous Pakistan, Algeria. Amazing. Welcome, guys. I'm very happy to have you here. So if you have any questions, please hold them to the end and I will do questions at the end. But now let's go on to the next word on the list, which is the word kicks kicks. Now to kick something we know is when you strike something with your foot, you kick it like a football, you kick the ball. However, sometimes we use the word kicks to mean fun or excitement and so we would say the phrase to get my kicks or to get your kicks, to have your fun. What do you do to get your kicks? And the example sentence I've given is, I love gymnastics. That's how I get my kicks. So we generally always use it with get. I get my kicks. I could also say, I get my kicks from doing gymnastics. I get my kicks from doing gymnastics. Okay, so to get your kicks. How do you get your kicks? Hmm. Hello, Julia. Thank you so much. So Julia has just dropped a two euro super chat. Thank you so much. That's very kind of you. And you've said, it's so nice to have you back and follow you. I'm really pleased that you've managed to jump into the lesson today, Julia. It's lovely to have you here. I hope you've had a good day at work. All right. So thank you very much. And Julia, remind me and I will send you these notes as a thank you for that. Okay, patrons also be aware that the Skype room for you is open. So if you have any questions, then please feel free to drop your question in the patron Skype room and I will answer you there. Okay, so the next word after kerfuffle and to get your kicks is the word or the phrase rather to kick back, to kick back. And to kick back basically means to put your legs up and relax. So at the end of a hard day, you would sit down, kick back and relax. So it's kind of like lean back in the chair, put your legs up to kick back, kick back. So the example sentence I've given is, why don't you take a load off? To take a load off means to sit down. Why don't you take a load off, kick back 
and relax. I love taking a load off, kicking back and relaxing at the end of a day, at the end of a very long, busy day. Um, Amal says, I get my kicks by watching your lesson. Well done. Great. And thank you very much. I'm glad you enjoy watching these lessons. And great use of the word, get your kicks, or the phrase rather. Well done. Okay, so the next phrase, what do we have? Oh, okay, the next word is the word kid. Now, technically, a kid is a baby goat. A baby goat, meh, one of those. Um, but we use kid regularly to mean child, so a human child. Um, and the example sentence I've given here is, hey, let's take the kids to the swimming pool. Let's take the kids to the swimming pool. And it is frequently used. So remember that one. We always, or quite regularly, say kid instead of child. It's just easier to say, I think. Fantastic. So, uh, hello everyone joining me. Um, I'm also going to tell you that the word kid can sometimes mean joke. So if you kid somebody, you joke somebody. Perhaps because that's what children do. So maybe that's where the origin of that word came from. Um, so kid meaning joke, we would regularly say, are you kidding me? Of course, it depends on the tone, but this could be good or bad. If you don't believe what someone has just said to you, if you're shocked, you would go, are you kidding me? Hang on, are you kidding me? Like if I, if I tell my, my son to clean up his room, and then the next day I walk into his room and it's a mess. It's worse than it's ever been before. It's a terrible state. I walk in and go, are you kidding me? You haven't even cleaned up your room. Okay, so you can use it in that context or you can just ask if someone is joking. You're like, are you, are you kidding me right now? Are you kidding? So kid, child or kidding to joke. Lovely. All right, so the next one on the word is to kill. So to kill, I'm going to kill someone, doesn't always have to be as dramatic as it sounds. Um, in a lot of cases, when someone says, I'm going to kill him or I'm going to kill her, you mean you're going to have a go at them. You're very, very angry with them and you're going to shout at them. And so the example sentence I've given here is, I am so angry with him, I will kill him when I see him. I'm so angry with him, I'll kill him when I see him. It doesn't mean I'm going to murder him, it just means he's in a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. Fantastic! So there's lots of you in now. We've learnt about how many? One, two, three, four, five, six words. Kerfuffle, kicks, to get your kicks, kick back, kid and kid, and the word kill. Hopefully you've remembered all of those. If you are here and you're enjoying this, please do give it a thumbs up. If you're new and you are trying to learn English, you want to sound more fluent and like a native, then please do press the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any future lessons. And if you are feeling generous, then please press the share button and let's get as many people in here as possible. We're on 123 watchers now. It would be great if we can get that up to 200. Is it possible? I don't know. Let's see, shall we? Okay, so the next one is the word killing. So very similar, killing, but this time it means to be hurting. So if something is killing you, it is hurting you. So I would normally say like my back is killing me or my tummy is killing me or my feet are killing me. It's killing me, it's hurting me a lot. So the example sentence I've given here is, I have been walking for hours and my feet are killing me. I've been walking for hours and my feet are killing me. So my feet are hurting an awful lot. Okay, so, oh, the numbers are going up. 135 people watching. Can you be the one to click that share button and get that number up to 200? It would be amazing if you could. So the next one is the word killer. Interesting. So to kill someone is to be angry at them, shout at them. If something is killing you, it's hurting you. But if something is 
killer, killer, then it means it's wonderful, it's great, it's fantastic, it's killer. Um, so for example, I've said here, she was wearing a killer dress. She was wearing an amazing dress. She was wearing a wonderful dress. She was wearing a killer dress. It was so good. <gasps> it made me stand back in awe. It was killer. All right. So that's interesting, isn't it? Three different uses of that word kill. Completely different meanings and nothing to do with murder. <laughs> okay. So the next one is the word... Oh. This is a bit of a naughty one. It's the word kinky. Kinky. Now, kinky, to be kinky, is to be eccentric, but in a sexual way. So if something is kinky, it's, it's eccentric, it's a bit out there, a bit crazy, but we're talking about in a sexual way. So you might say that boots are kinky, or you might say that um, a dress is kinky. It's quite sexual and a little bit crazy, a little bit unusual but in a sexual way. Um, if somebody likes kinky things, it means they enjoy sex that's a little bit strange, a little bit different. Um, they are kinky. Um, I don't know, maybe they like tickling you with a feather duster or something like that, or dressing up in strange clothes. Um, kinky. And the example sentence I've given here is, that outfit is, is a little bit kinky if you ask me. That outfit is a little bit kinky, if you ask me. Oh, matron. <laughs> okay, wonderful. And I have one of my patrons here saying hello. Hello, Jay. Uh, nice of you to drop in. How are you? Very well, I hope. Um, Okie dokie. So the next word is the word kisser. Kisser. And kisser, in this case, means mouth mouth, your kisser, because you kiss with it, right? Um, and the example sentence I've given here is, she hit her right in the kisser. She hit her right in the kisser. So if I hit someone in the mouth, I hit her right in the kisser. Oops, a daisy. Uh, wonderful. Um, so... The next word is, oh, this is a good one. The word klutz, klutz, klutz. And this means to be clumsy. If somebody is clumsy, they are a klutz. And actually, I usually hear this put together with the word clumsy. So I've often been called a clumsy klutz, a clumsy klutz. Hey, you clumsy klutz, be careful. And the example sentence I've given here is, I banged my head again. I'm such a klutz. I banged my head again. I'm such a klutz. Are you clumsy? I'm terribly clumsy. I walk into cupboards and doors all the time. I stub my toe all the time. I'm always scratching myself and burning myself. Terrible. I'm, I'm a danger. I'm a danger to society. So hello, Jay. You said, how nice um, you are live at this time. Thank you. I'm glad it pleases you. Okie dokie. So I've got a couple more to do and then I will take your comments and questions. Oh, I say a couple. We've got quite a few to go actually. <laughs> All right. So the next word, I'm asked about this word a lot and it's the word knackered. Knackered. And it's a silent K. So we just go straight into a N. Na -kud. Knackered. And in some cases, knackered means broken. It's knackered, it's broken, it does not work. And the example sentence I've given here is, the TV is working fine, but the remote control is knackered. The TV is working fine, but the remote control is knackered. Now, there is another meaning for knackered, which you may have heard, and that is tired. So if you are knackered, it means you're tired very tired. And the example sentence I've given here is, I have been awake since 5am, which means I am going to be knackered by 9pm. I've been awake since 5am, 5 5 which means I'm going to be knackered by 9pm. I'm sure you would be if you were waking up at that time in the morning. 
Okay, the next word is the word knock. Knock. And the same as with knackered, the K is silent. So usually when you have a K and an N together, the K will be silent. So to knock is can be known to um, mean criticize, to criticize, to knock something. So I'd say don't knock it or don't knock me, don't criticize me. And the example sentence I've given here is, oh, it's actually a, a phrase that you'll hear a lot, which is don't knock it until you've tried it. Don't knock it until you've tried it. So let's say that um, I'm saying, hey, have you tried this coffee? It's brilliant. And you go, nah, I don't like coffee. And I say, well, have you tasted it? Have you ever tried it? And you say, no, I don't like the smell of it, so I don't want to try it. And then I'd say, oh, well, you know, you shouldn't criticize it unless you've actually tried it. Don't knock it until you've tried it. Don't knock it until you've tried it. It's actually very nice. Mm -hmm. So the um, so that's pretty straightforward, I think. But remember that phrase, don't knock it until you've tried it. So the next word phrase is knock off, knock off. Now, knock off in this um, on this example means the end of a shift or the end of your day at work. When you stop working, when do you knock off? When do you stop working? So you can say, I knock off work at 5 p.m. I knocked off work at 6 p.m. last night and tonight I will knock off at 7 p.m. So what time do you knock off work usually? The example sentence I've given is, what time do you knock off tonight? What time do you knock off tonight? What time do you stop working? Okay, and the next one here is knock up. And this is where you have to be careful. You don't want to mix up your phrasal verbs. To knock someone up means to get them pregnant. So you can only knock up a girl, of course. So you get the girl pregnant. If you get the girl pregnant, you've knocked her up to knock her up. Um, David's daughter got knocked up by some guy from my factory. David's daughter got knocked up by some guy from my factory. Oh dear. Naughty, naughty. Okay. Um, the next word is the word knockout. Now, you probably heard knockout if you follow any kind of like boxing um, or any fighting to be knocked out normally means to be knocked unconscious. So if I'm hit in the head and I fall unconscious, I've been knocked out. It's a knockout. But you can also say that something is a knockout and it means it's amazing. So if I think that you are stunning, really beautiful and an incredible personality, you're just amazing, then I would say you're a knockout. You're a knockout. It's knockout. So the example sentence I've given is, you should see my wife. She is a knockout. She is glorious, beautiful. Okay, this next one is quite funny. Um, I used to hear this quite a lot when I was younger. Um, I haven't heard it much recently, but it is known by a lot of people. And that is a knuckle sandwich. A knuckle sandwich is a punch in the mouth. So it's literally, here's the knuckle. If you punch it in your mouth, that person eats the knuckle like a knuckle sandwich. Ah, oh, like that. Um, so the example sentence I've given is a threat. If you carry on, then I will give you a knuckle sandwich. If you carry on, I'll give you a knuckle sandwich. <laughs> okay, I like that one. Um, obviously, I don't like threatening people, but it's a funny, it's a funny slang term. Guys, we've got 171 people in. You can help me to get this over 200 just by clicking that share button right now. Go on, just go share and share it with Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. And if you tell me that you've shared it, I will give you a shout out, okay? So hit share, let me know in the comments and I'll give you a shout out. Tell me you've shared it and I'll shout you out. Thank you guys. Okay, so the next one is the word kook. Kook. If someone is a kook, it means that they are a bit eccentric, a little bit crazy, perhaps. Um, 
it's not so nice to call someone a kook. Um, yeah, because you're just saying they're a little bit crazy, uh, maybe a bit annoying, they're a bit kooky, a bit strange. And the example sentence I've given is, uh, let's have a look. Um, just take her with a pinch of salt, she's a kook. Just take her with a pinch of salt, she's a kook. I mean, she's a bit crazy. And to take someone with a pinch of salt means don't take them too seriously. So that's one you should definitely remember because that is commonly used. To take someone with a pinch of salt, don't take them seriously. Or don't take them too seriously because it's not to be trusted. Okay? All right, so um, the next one on the list and the last one on the list before I take your comments and questions is the word kooky. So we've heard kook means to be an eccentric person or a crazy person. Kooky is just the adjective. It means that it's strange or eccentric. So you could say, um, uh, she is kooky. She's a kooky teacher. <laughs> I am a little bit strange and eccentric, I guess. So Anna is a kooky teacher, you could say. She's a little bit strange, a little bit eccentric, a little bit crazy. But the example sentence is, we are all a little bit kooky. We are all a little bit kooky. Bye. Okay, fantastic. So I have Monica has 